From our studio in Georgetown, this is the TV Delmarva Channel 14 News at 4. Good day, Delmarva. Reporter Rob Petrie here for TV Delmarva Channel 14 News. Straight ahead, at least one person has died and several more have been injured in an early morning fire that tore through a building in downtown Dover. Delaware State Police are asking for anyone who witnessed the carjacking crime spree up in Newcastle over the weekend to reach out. And Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky addresses Congress. These stories and more coming up, but weather first with Hunter Alton. Good Wednesday, Delmarva. I hope you're enjoying the nice warm sunshine out there, especially if you live in the inland locations. A little bit cooler along the Atlantic coast, all thanks to some onshore breeze and with those cooler water temperatures. But take it a live look outside of North Ocean City, Maryland. We have the sunshine. We have a couple of clouds here and there. But overall, it's been a, quite a fantastic day with temperatures currently 57 degrees in North Ocean City. Take a look at some satellite and radar. I want to take the focus down in Mississippi and Alabama. There is an upper level low system that is meandering down there. And that will be slowly making its way towards our neck of the woods starting late tonight and pretty much all day of Thursday. This is going to bring us some rain chances and keeping those temperatures a little bit cooler, but still above average for this time of year. Let's have a look at those temperatures elsewhere on Del Marva. Right now, it is 67 degrees in Georgetown, 68 for Salisbury, 65 for Pocomoke City. Much warmer once you get towards Centerville and Easton at 71 degrees, 66 for Dover, 70 degrees in Wilmington, and currently 69 degrees all the way up north in Newark. We're seeing some fairly dry conditions out there. Humidities anywhere between about 30 and 40 percent for the most part with the dry air mass in place, but that will change a little bit later on as we go into the evening hours. But we are see some somewhat breezy conditions at time currently sustained anywhere between about 8 and 13 miles per hour from the south and east but we're also seeing some wind gusts anywhere between about 10 and even 20 miles per hour at times currently gusting 18 miles per hour here in Georgetown, 19 for Salisbury, 17 for Pocomook City, 16 for Easton, 17 for Dover, and currently gusting to 13 miles per hour in Wilmington. Now we are going to be increasing clouds as we head into the overnight hours tonight, and as well as looking at more rainfall once again, especially going into the day on Thursday. Just how much rain are we expecting to get? I'll let you know in just a little while. died and several more have been injured in an early morning fire that tore through a building in downtown Dover. The Dover Police and Fire Department along with the City of Dover Fire Marshal's Office are investigating the blaze that broke out around 2.30 a.m. Wednesday at a large mixed-use building on the corner of Lockerman Street and South New Street in downtown Dover. Now, multiple agencies responded to assist with the fire that was finally brought under control around 8 a.m. following hours of effort to extinguish the blaze. At this time, officials say one male victim was found deceased inside the building and seven others have been transported to a nearby hospital with the majority of them being evaluated and treated for minor injuries and smoke inhalation. The cause of the fire is not yet known and remains under investigation. Delaware State Police are asking for anyone who witnessed the carjacking crime spree in Newcastle to reach out. On March 13, 30-year-old Britalia Seaman of Newcastle was arrested for two carjackings, kidnapping, and multiple collisions, including a fatal pedestrian crash. As the investigation continues, detectives are seeking information from anyone who may have been in or around the Route 9 corridor between 8.45 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. with potential videos or witness information. Delaware State Police held a press conference Sunday following the incident. The initial investigation determined a female subject who was later identified as Bertalia Simone, a 30-year-old female from Newcastle had entered the front passenger side of a parked white Chevrolet Trax. A 67-year-old male and a 66-year-old female attempted to remove Simone from their vehicle, but were unsuccessful. She was able to get to the driver's side and began to flee the area. 
The female, the female victim was struck by the SUV and sustained non-life-threatening injuries. There were two juveniles in the vehicle in the back seat of the SUV, were, but were able to successfully exit before she fled southbound on Route 9. Moments later, Retalia struck a 48-year-old Newcastle County man south of Boothhurst Boulevard. The pedestrian was transported to an area hospital where unfortunately he died from his injuries. This fatal collision remains under investigation by the Delaware State Police Troop 2 Collision Reconstruction Unit. After the fatal pedestrian crash, Vitalia flees southbound into Old Newcastle and strikes a 19-year-old female pedestrian in the parking lot of the SPCA in the area of South Street and 6th Street. The pedestrian victim sustained non-life-threatening injuries. Retalia then exited the parking lot and traveled southbound on South Street before turning right onto Washington Street and begins traveling northbound. As a Maserati was approaching her vehicle, Retalia crosses over the double yellow line and crashes head on with the Maserati on Delaware 141 just prior to the intersection of State Route 273. The driver, a 34-year-old Wilmington man and a passenger, a 26-year-old Wilmington woman, sustained non-life-threatening injuries during the crash. Anyone with any information is urged to contact Detective Bridget Harris with Delaware State Police at 302-365-8410. Meanwhile, the Governor John Carney, Lieutenant Governor Bethany Hall Long, and the Department of Health have announced almost $17 million in financial support for Delawareans impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. The new support, which also will expand COVID vaccinations and testing and provide housing assistance for vulnerable Delawareans, is funded by the American Rescue Plan Act. In response to the shortage of health care workers across the state, DHSS is providing quarterly retention payments totaling over $6 million to registered nurses, LPNs, CNAs, and other direct care staff at 24-7 health care facilities. The initiative will also provide millions in funding for increased testing, housing assistance, and emergency supplies. Well, Delaware State Auditor Kathy McGinnis has announced that her office has launched a brand new American Rescue Plan Act fund tracker called the Fox Tracker that is now accessible on the auditor's website. The development of the Fox Tracker comes after the federal government allocated over $1.5 billion in Rescue Act funds in March of last year. The Fund Tracker webpage breaks out exactly how much of that $1.5 billion has been allocated to each entity and program across the state. The interactive charts and graphs available at grayfox.delaware.gov allows users to drill down into the transaction level details about how state agencies and school districts have spent their federal Federal funding. The Fox Tracker data is updated every Thursday. Well, as a thank you to our supporters, we're giving away a Roku Premiere 4K streaming player so you can watch TV Delmarva on your own TV. Fill in a short form for your chance to win. The winner will be announced March 18th, that's this Friday, during a Facebook Live broadcast on our Facebook page. So you have until Friday morning to submit and enter this contest. So be sure to head to our website right now, tvdelmarva.com, to enter for your chance to win a brand new Roku Premiere 4K streaming player. Good luck and may the odds be ever in your favor. Coming up, a new initiative is aimed at helping the restaurant industry deal with substance abuse disorder. More details on the way. Keep it here. The Division of Public Health has initiated a restaurant accolade program to train and educate restaurant industry staff on how to reverse an opioid overdose and support coworkers who are suffering from substance abuse disorder. The program was developed to assist restaurants, hospitality groups, and other food service industry workers across the first state while working to combat the stigma often associated with drug abuse. The program teaches staff in food service industry how to respond to an opioid overdose and helps restaurants create policies and workplace environments to support their employees and patrons who are struggling with substance abuse disorder. The Department of Health has planned a 
virtual launch across the state to introduce the program to restaurant and hospitality group managers this spring. The event will feature presentations by Dr. Rattay on the current state of the opioid epidemic here in Delaware, as well as the work being done across the state to address the issue. Well, it's looking like we're in store for partly cloudy skies with rain developing overnight tonight as we get a preview of your pinpoint weather forecast with Hunter Alton. With a nice and warm afternoon today, we will start to see an increase in those clouds going into the evening hours tonight. Looking for a wet start to your Thursday with an area of low pressure moving in from the southwest. Now this rain will be light to moderate in nature, but it will be out of the picture by tomorrow night. But we'll be keeping those warmer temperatures throughout much of next week as well. Now, how much rain are we expecting tomorrow? I'll let you know when we come back here on TV Del Marva Channel 14 News. Well, unfortunately, we are going to be leaving that sunshine behind for the rest of this afternoon because during the overnight hours, we're going to be increasing those clouds and it's going to be mostly cloudy for the most part. The evening hours still look quite dry. It's once we get after midnight, we will be starting to see some rain develop from southwest to northeast with some fairly mild temperatures too, 50 to 54 degrees across the region. And we've got some light winds from the southeast at about 5 miles per hour. Now, take a look at Futurecast. Rest of the overnight hours into the daytime hours on Thursday. This is 8 o'clock this evening. We're looking at an increase in those clouds. Temperatures are still fairly mild for the most part. Anywhere between about 54 and 57 degrees. Once we get just after midnight, we're still going to be looking at plenty of cloud cover. But if you take a look over towards the areas of Virginia, that's the beginning signs of that rain moving in. All thanks to an area of low pressure that is slowly meandering its way northeastward. Throughout the next 24, 48 hours, temperatures still right around 50 degrees. But going into tomorrow morning, we're going to be looking at a wet commute for your Thursday, looking at widespread areas of some light to moderate precipitation. Temperatures still fairly mild in the lower 50s for the most part, but once we get into the afternoon hours, we're going to be a little bit scattered in nature, but the intensity is going to increase with some areas of some scattered showers once the area of low pressure is directly over our neck of the woods. Temperatures getting into the mid and upper 50s, but the good news is once we get into the evening hours, we're going to be looking at the area of low pressure moving well off towards our northeast. Still going to be dealing with some isolated rain showers here and there with temperatures in the low 50s but by the time we get into the heart of the overnight hours an area of low pressure is out of the picture and we're going to be looking at some clearing skies as well and still for a fairly mild night going into Friday morning. Take a look at some of the rainfall amounts we're expecting over the next 48 hours. Generally, it looks like anywhere between about four tenths of an inch to about a half inch of precipitation for areas in central and southern Delmarva, with a little bit more over towards the Maryland western shore near La Plata. We could be seeing about three quarters of an inch of rain before all said and done by tomorrow evening. Now, Thursday forecast overall, we got periods of rain. It's going to feel like a fairly dreary day overall. Temperatures 57 to 60 degrees, and we got some light winds now from the northeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Take a look at the marine conditions for your Thursday, beginning with the Atlantic. We got periods of rain, 53 degrees, winds from the northeast, 5 to 15 miles per hour with seas of 2 to 4 feet. Take a look at the Delaware Bay. We got periods of rain, 54 degrees, winds from the northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour, with seas of less than one foot expected. And then the Chesapeake Bay. We got periods of rain, 56 degrees, winds from the north at 5 to 10 miles per hour, and with seas of around one foot expected. Now, going into the overnight hours tomorrow night, we're still going to be dealing with some scattered showers, especially early, but we will be clearing out those skies throughout the overnight hours and still looking at some mild overnight temperatures, 46 to 50 degrees with light winds now from the northwest at about 5 miles per hour. Now, take a look at that extended outlook. We do get a break on Friday, though, but still going to be fairly cloudy for the most part. And nice warm temperatures, too, getting into the lower 70s. We continue the warm conditions for Saturday as well, but we will be reintroducing the rain chances with a cold front moving through with some scattered showers. Going into Sunday, though, we're going to be cooling down back into the lower 60s, but we're going to be looking at plenty of more sunshine. 
But by the time we get into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, another storm system is looming with temperatures in the lower 60s, but we still will be looking at some scattered rain showers overall and just in time for that spring equinox on Monday. Coming up, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky addressed Congress this morning where he called on President Biden to take action against Russia. More details on the way. Stay tuned. Well, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky addressed Congress this morning where he called on President Biden to take action against Russia. Now I'm almost 45 years old. Today my age stopped when the hearts of more than 100 children stopped beating. I see no sense in life if it cannot stop the death. And this is my main mission as the leader of my people, great Ukrainians. And as the leader of my nation, I am addressing the President Biden. You are the leader of the nation, of your great nation. I wish you to be the leader of the world. Being the leader of the world means to be the leader of peace. Thank you. Slava Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine. Weather Classroom is sponsored by No Nonsense Office Machines. Committed to providing quality products and services with over 15 years of experience here in Sussex County. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today's weather lesson, we will be talking about the differences between flood advisories, watches, and warnings. We have four different categories for this, so let's begin with flood advisories, which means be aware. A flood advisory is issued when a specific weather event that is forecast to occur may become a nuisance. A flood advisory is issued when flooding is not expected to be bad enough to issue a warning. However, it may cause a significant inconvenience. And if caution is not exercised, it could lead to a situations that may threaten life and or property. Now we have flood watches, which means be prepared. A flood watch is issued when conditions are favorable for a specific hazardous weather event to occur. A flood watch is issued when conditions are favorable for flooding, but it does not mean flooding will occur. But it's a good possibility that the forecast suggests that flooding may be an issue. Then we got flood warnings, which means take action. A flood warning is issued when the hazardous weather event is imminent or already happening. A flood warning is issued when flooding is imminent or is occurring at this time. And then finally, we have flash flood warnings, which also means take action. A flash flood warning is issued when a flash flood is imminent or occurring, and if you are in a flood prone area, move immediately to high ground. A flash flood is a sudden violent flood that can take from minutes to hours to develop, and it's even possible to experience a flash flood in areas not receiving rainfall at all, but just happen to be downstream from a river or a creek. Well, that about does it for us today, Delmarva. Be sure to follow us on Facebook at TV Delmarva and on our website, tvdelmarva.com, for real-time news and weather updates. And while you're there, be sure to sign our petition calling on the major cable providers to carry TV Delmarva on their platforms so we can provide this kind of hard-hitting local programming to all of Delmarva. Until next time, I'm Rob Petrie reporting for TV Delmarva Channel 14 News.